All right, welcome to another episode of Medicine Mondays. I'm yours truly, Dr. Bay, your favorite board certified internist, host of Medicine Mondays, host of the Real Physician Reacts, as well as a slew of other things I do. I think I do like a million different things. And I'm just excited uh, to talk to you guys about a conversation that we talk a lot. You know me, you know my history, you know my wife's history. We, we love talking about mental health here. And I think it's so important because like, I think a lot of the front loading of getting to seek help uh, gets talked about a lot. But I don't think a lot of people really talk about what ha- kind of happens during and more importantly, what happens after you get the help. So I've enlisted an amazing expert guest, Rachel McLeod, to kind of kind of help, you know, remove some of that shade of doubt of what happens in the middle at the end and kind of moving forward uh, with therapy. So Rachel, first of all, thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to really kind of bless the lunch and learning community today. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So for, for those for those who uh, you know may not know of you or they, they don't read your bio because you know I got uh, if, you know send the show notes they they like to skip it. Who who is who is Rachel McCall? Like who's who who's who's who are you? Like that's more important. Yeah, I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I am a mental health therapist and emotional wellness coach, and I help people do the brain work to get rid of symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress. And so I don't do counseling. (laughs) I don't do marriage therapy. I could make people's marriage look like a dumpster fire. That is not my expertise. I really just help people do the work of getting rid of symptoms. So, and and how, how did you get to that point? How did you yeah. get to the point, especially? And, and I always, I love, I love, especially I, talk, I love talking to my professionals because we all have this journey that we somehow, we just somehow end up on the podcast talking to, to me. Like, I always wonder, like, how did they get to this point uh, yeah. here in, in your journey of your career and just life in general? Yeah, I uh, was a therapist. I graduated from college and I started doing work and I hated it because I was not getting the results. I like a little bit of magic and I like to see results. I like, I like people to come in and get better. And I was not able to do that. And I was mad and I kind of just threw my stuff in and walked away for quite a while. And then I had my own mental health crisis. I had obsessive compulsive disorder and I really, my ability to solve my problems in my life were just non-existent. And so I was having problem after problem pile up. And then that was making a maze of problems. And I started seeing somebody who helped my son um, with a, with a problem that he had been having since childhood and she resolved it in three days. And so I was really spooked out by that because she did it with some electromagnetic stuff and so but you know she um, told she said she told me to try this it will change your life and she introduced me to emotional freedom techniques which was not talk therapy so I was like interesting Mm. because I did not want to I was I was done with talk therapy uh, because I wasn't any good at it and it wasn't the talk and talk therapy is learning to cope with these symptoms and I didn't want to do that I have three small children at the time and a marriage I was trying to rock and trying to be great at and I could not do that with these symptoms hanging around and so she introduced me to this and uh, the first night after watching the the training um, video I was laying in bed having racing thoughts and I just had this thought why don't I try that thing, that tapping thing right now. And so I started using it and I tapped through. And if you know anything about emotional freedom techniques, it's about 30 seconds. And I yawned and I had been having this problem for, I don't know how long it was just an an indescribable amount of time. And the, so I yawned and then I did the tapping again, another sequence. I fell straight asleep. I woke up the next morning, rested. And I was like, holy cow, what else can I try this on? (laughs) Yes. And, and then I just went out and in my life, anywhere I found symptoms, I just started using this and I just started resolving these anywhere they showed up. And then I really started to learn how to do this deeper and deeper. And then I thought, I wonder if I could help other people with this. So I, I went and got myself back into the field and then, um, and then I was helping people with this and like their brains like this the same way mine did and their symptoms would stop too. And then I opened up a practice and I was doing this a lot, but then people still had their disorder. Like we were doing the work, we were getting rid of symptoms, but they still had a disorder. And I was like, oh, mm. <laughs> this is not, this is, so I was like, let's see, can I help them resolve their whole disorder? And so I set to work at that and then that was happening. And so after that, then I was like, I wonder if I can, we can do this faster. 
because who wants to do this for two years? Never, never. <laughs> so, and not that I don't love my clients, but you got things to do, go, you know, enjoy your life. Oh, um, and so I, then I started teaching, I started teaching them to use the interventions. Um, and by that time I had picked up thought-filled therapy, um, energy medicine interventions and EMDR. And I was starting to teach them all of these really wonderful, high-powered interventions. Mm. And I was teaching them how to do it safely. And I'd give them specific exercises. So I would have them do this. We divide the work. You do this work at home. When you come back, we'll do this. And, and we would just back and forth That's and back nice. and forth. And pretty so they soon, had to be active in their, uh, totally. their, their treatment uh, of themselves. Yes, yes. And I didn't understand that. I was just trying to get through this faster. I didn't understand that they would be learning their own inner world. I didn't understand that they would be renewing their, their trust with themselves, that they would be rebuilding their relationship with their own brain. I didn't know all the amazing, that they would be learning to rely on themselves, that they would, that this would bring out a whole new level of confidence within them. I had no idea all the amazing things that would come by them treating themselves. But you know, what's it, interesting, especially just kind of just kind of listen to your story is that and I can I can only speak especially from a medical side is that well, we, we kind of go into medicine kind of thinking of a goal like I'm going to take care of patients, save lives. And then when we get to the point when we're we're supposed to be saving lives and we're not necessarily getting the results that, you know, we always kind of hoped and dreamed of, uh, we do kind of run into this kind of clouded almost like a brick wall. Like, hold on, like I, like I set this path, I, I thought this is what I was supposed to do, but now that I'm here, it's not doing what it's supposed to do, right? You know, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not working the way it's supposed to work. And I think it takes a lot of strength for you to be one, be able to kind of acknowledge that, hey, this, this is not really working. Like I, I thought it would be working. And then more importantly, to kind of step away, right? And say, you know what, if it ain't working. I, I got to go in this direction here because I, I know, unfortunately, I know a lot of my colleagues who will keep running into that brick wall, mm -hmm. even though they know it's not working, keep running into that brick wall over and over and over again, hoping for a different result. So right. I, I'm definitely loving the fact that when you are able to, one, quickly recognize, like, nah, this is not, nah, this not what I kind of signed up for, so to speak. And, and because of the same, so I'm, I'm, I'm headed out there. And I'm thankful that, you know, you got that chance opportunity to kind of learn something new that kind of drew you back in. And yeah. that was, was that technique, was that something that just typically wasn't, wasn't introduced to you, like, especially during your, your initial training, or was this something oh, that no. typically would have to go out, uh, uh, shout out, out the to box. Darko, uh, outside the <laughs> box, right? Like, is, is this something you would typically have to go outside to kind of learn some of these techniques when you first kind of got into it? Yeah, no, these are very outside the box. These are, um, these are just now, uh, my, these are emotional freedom techniques is very similar to ac acupuncture, but it's without needles. Mm. And so you're using Chinese medicine and you're using the knowledge of the body and the body's energy systems to help the brain heal itself. And since the brain is electrical, it's a perfect match for the parts of the brain that are not, that are causing symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress. And, um, and it, and that part of the brain doesn't listen to words and what we think and what other people say, it wants to know, are we safe? Or are we not safe? You know, and so, and it's only listening to the body for those messages. And so when we start using the body for these messages, to send these messages of it's okay, let the healing happen, stop blocking the whole healing pathways mm -hmm. now, you know, come on over here and let some healing happen that. And so that, um, when those healing pathways are unblocked, we have more electrical movement of all this information coming up from our body. It's called um, neuroception, right? So our nervous system is, is perceiving the world around us. And its job is to send information to our, the front of our brain, our front of the brain still to make sense of it, and then make some programs for us to navigate that moment successfully. And so when this, when the survival system, when this is, neuroception is coming up and some of it registers as pain, which physical pain registers as pain, but also emotional pain. And a lot of the negative emotions also register as pain to the pain neurons. Right, and your body so, doesn't know this no. is physical, it just no. knows. No, and hey, so all of a sudden, pain. your survival system, whose job is to get you away from this pain, jumps in and is like, no, and starts pushing, getting you away from pain, which is actually your own emotions. And so now you can't get this neuroception to the part of the brain where you can make sense of, and then 
and you're in a survival state now and you're in fight, flight, freeze or faint and you've got symptoms of anxiety, depression and traumatic stress. Mm. Right. So Ooh, if we I, just I love, focus in, that. right, mm -hmm. if we just focus in right there and unblock this symptoms start resolving immediately. As a matter of fact, I will take I will demonstrate this with somebody in our first session because I don't expect them to believe my words. <laughs> and let's get going. And, with and, the, um, with the I definitely have a good follow up question about just the. Uh, you know, the, the belief system of uh, your initial client, especially in the beginning. Right. And because we're not using the belief system system to heal, it doesn't matter. Right. And we're using, we're talking directly with the survival system. And so we'll take something triggering to them in their current life, and then we'll use the interventions. And let's say the intensity of it is a seven or an eight. As soon as we're finished with the interventions, they're noticing that the intensity is lower. And then they're feeling different and they mm. say things I can breathe again. And my heart rate is slowing down, right? And, and all these things when we know that these interventions reduce cortisol levels immediately. So, I mean, even if, yeah. even if nothing's happening on that, I can actually feel the results, the, the results are happening. And so, <clears throat> but then when we're finished, we'll use that for two or three times for one stressor to try to get it to a zero or a two, something like that. And then afterwards, they're like, is this magic? I've been struggling with this thing the whole, every day. And I'm like, no, this is not magic. This is healthy brain function. This is how brains are actually supposed to work, but they, we do have challenges with, with fear. We do have challenges processing these things. And we actually need to help the brain learn how to do, um, how to process these emotions well that it has difficulty with. And most of us have some difficulty. Some of us are bitter, bitterness. We can't like, that's the one right. um, resentfulness, fear, um, loneliness. There's typically some brain has some problem with some emotion. And so we need to rehabilitate its ability to learn how to, Hey, when this comes up, this is what we do. And we can walk it through its healing pathways for this. It's, it's healing process. And so it learns. And then pretty soon it's like, Oh, I get it. Let me move. Let me try that. You know, right, and okay, the brain okay. is supposed I see, to do I see the results. So I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. And it, you know, obviously, once we see positive results, we want to keep going. That's right. Toward towards said positive uh, That's results. Right. That's right. Interesting, That's right. especially especially with the that type <laughs> of kind of training, and 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 obviously, I I always say here, especially here in this country, we're we're so focused on kind of the way we do things that we always look at what quote unquote outsiders do as something not only foreign, but like, oh, can't work because that's not what we do here. Right. How, like, how long does it take for your clients to kind of break that mental, like block that's usually in front of a lot of people that says like, hold on, you want to do what again? Like, Huh? Like how, how like what's like especially as you, you talk about kind of the first encounter, like how is, is it usually kind of those first exercises is enough to kind of say, like, oh, you know what? It's not really as bad as I, I, I kind of thought. Yeah, you know, I um I really changed the way I do things so much that when I'm I'm on Facebook, I'm I'm have a YouTube channel, I'm talking about this stuff a lot, I'm getting results, I have testimonials. So I put a lot out there so that people only step to me when they're ready to do this work. I love it. Right. So I, that, um, so I don't deal with a lot of resistance, but I do still have people that are like, I need to be here, but I just don't get it. And so I, I'm thinking of a recent client in every session we have, even though she's getting results, she's like, maybe it's the breathing. Maybe it's the, this, maybe <laughs> She can't, can't, can't wrap my can't, brain around can't, this, can't, can't. right? But she can't knock down results. that last obstacle of mental that says like, no, this is what's That's right. is working and why it's working. I, I love it. That's right. And you know, what's interesting is that this stuff is outside of the box, but since acupuncture is now researched enough and it's now covered by insurance there, and then EMDR is coming in, which is also eye movement based, and it's using the body again mm -hmm. to do healing work and that's coming on. And so, um, and so there's, they're, they're coming up, but they're not, it's not easy to find uh, people doing like even psychology today, it's, you can find EMDR specialists, but you can't really find, there's no button for uh, emotional freedom techniques that they're mm. trained in this. They're trained in thought filled therapy. They're trained in energy medicine. You don't really have that. And there's not, because this is not something that is taught in school. I never heard of this. And right. it, I, it's starting like EMDR is starting to come out um, in schools. Like they're talking about that, but um, 
not a lot of therapists are stepping out of the box to add these tools. Exactly. In. And, and of course, and I'm, and I'm big, I'm big on, especially as just a, and as a physician who just happens to do online stuff, right? Like I do, um, being outside of the box, like has always been a thing for me. It's always something that interests me. Yeah. And even when you're talking about training and, and talking about learning and education, the, the box was defined by someone who, you know, probably isn't around anymore. Right. And when we when we allow ourselves to kind of continue <laughs> remain kind of confined in the way we learn, the way we practice, the way we educate, the way we take care of our clients and patients, um, like we we end up doing a disservice, honestly, to the patients more than anything else, mm-hmm. right? Not not giving mm-hmm. you know your patients that opportunity to say like, hey, you know what? There's some more techniques out there um, yeah. that and that uh, that are that I know are available. I may not necessarily be trained in doing so. Uh, yes. But like, I know someone who is like, I, especially yeah, if we're, if our end goal that's is right. always the patients, like you, right. like at the end of the day, you got to take care of the patients or the, I'm sorry, the clients. That's right. Well, I, in my case, I was fired for this, for using this intervention at one point. Wow. Um, yeah. Interesting. Uh, I asked permission because Ooh. I knew it was out of the box, but I, I like to be on the cutting edge. I like to be out of the box. Yeah, I, love I like this. to be where the results are. See, I'm, see, right? I'm more in see lunch and learn community. I'm getting more interested now. Let's, let's go. Wow. Okay. Uh, and I had, I had asked permission. I talked about it and introduced it and And they were like, yeah, sounds great. And this was such a wonderful fit. I was in a hospital setting. Uh, Gosh, I can't tell you how many people I taught this and how many panic attacks we worked through, um, which which helped them get care because they were going to leave against medical advice because they were in such a state of panic. Mm -hmm. And we were able to cut through the panic and actually help them get their their care. And so many people, just so many great memories, but um, most of the clients wanted me to do the tapping on them. And I was new and um, I didn't know that this would be a thing. So this is actually, I was actually fired for doing the tapping on them because the, they were like, we didn't know you were this. And I had wow. looked around for standard practice and people, social workers were applying this with permission and, you know, and so I would document, you know, <laughs> I was honest. I'm so honest. Right. And so, <laughs> and they were, re- they finally, like one of the nurses pulled on me or something and like, can, and so they pulled up all my charts and there it was. And like, you put our whole thing at risk and uh, goodbye. And wow, HR <laughs> handled <Wow>. me. <laughs> got handled but it was it was wonderful and it was just like you know there it's just the system's just not ready for this but right. every place that it opens up and this starts coming in where we start all the science speaks to this all the science speaks to how our brains heal and how this information needs to make it through and oh, yeah. there's so much there's so much here that it's just a matter of time but it is kind of frustrating to watch i, I had a guest um i forget I, i'm so mad i don't remember the guest uh episode number dr philip dion he was a neurologist and he <laughs> talked about neuroplasticity and yes. you know the fact that you know our brains are just old ultimately we wired, but they can be rewired. Like Absolutely. they can be rewired if you train them to rewire. And, yeah. and, and like, just like with the way you're talking, I'm like, oh yeah, see, and it makes so much sense mm-hmm. that again, like the brain doesn't understand, you know, like what's physically happened. It just knows that like a signal got sent that says, hey, right. interpret it yeah. this way. So mm-hmm. if you send the correct signals or you um, block, I don't want to, I, I may be saying the terminology incorrectly, um, block or like, you know, just like some, if you, if the, if the signal gets changed, then your brain will interpret it in a certain way. So that's why I'm loving what you're saying. Cause like that, especially from a medical side, that makes all of the sense yeah. in the world. Yes. Yes. it does. And, and I, I can see how you, you dropping that knowledge on them and folks not being ready, uh, can be scary. Right. Cause, and, and I'm pretty sure now, like how, how many years ago was that? I mean, how, how long ago was that? I think it was 2016. 16, right. So we're going to six years now. So yeah. eventually there's going to be a time when people are going to look back and like, I can't believe we weren't doing this. Yes. Right. Like that, like, and I'm not sure if it might be happening now, but like, uh, that's what I was wondering. Like, uh, like there's going to be a point where people are going to turn around, look back in history and say like, like, how come we weren't doing this before? Like I, I talk about medications and treatments all the time. And when, when I tell people, man, you, you don't even want to know how we used to take care of <laughs> patients, how we used to treat patients. Yeah. Cause it like, when we look back, it seems prehistoric. It seems 
barbaric, barbaric versus kind of the stuff we do now. And I, I think as we grow and technology grows and more importantly, our knowledge of what works grows, like, like our systems have to grow with it. And being in, I know medicine is so slow to change. So I, I don't even know. I, I can only imagine what it's like in, in on the therapy side. But like, I know medicine. Yeah, like it's, it's yeah. like molasses over there. Uh, you know, to have any newer intervention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so and there's, you know, it it's not it's not easy. And many, you know, I don't think most people want to be fired. You know, right. Um, right. but and then, so that puts them at a bind because you like, you, yeah. you know, you want to take care of your patients, you know, what works, but yeah. you're not allowed to do it. Yeah. When I was fired, my whole, my whole team was like, I mean, it pushed that, that whoo, energy through the whole pack of us. And wow. so it's, and so anyway, but the good thing is, is I want to jump on this neuroplasticity talk. And, um, uh, and, uh, some like I, this is just so exciting because when you have symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress to have the power to shift out of a panic attack in under a minute is life-changing. Um, and so, so most people are very excited. You know, I help people resolve their disorder. And I specialize in resolving it in two to six months. I had, you know, there are many people that I work with that really need a slower path than that. Um, but I've kind of got it dialed into who can, who can tolerate a fast one. And I really have options for them, but, um, but the deal is, is that, you know, when you have a lot of the anxiety and depression comes from childhood trauma and it comes from trauma at some point, if it comes from childhood trauma, there's so many systems that the brain hasn't been able to build yet. You know, like the ability mm. for self-confidence, self-love, self-acceptance, um, the ability to self-regulate. Um, parents are supposed to hook this up for our kids. And if a lot of parents are not well enough to hook that up. And so children are running around very dysregulated and without their brain hooked up in a way that's going to create success in their lives. And so uh, along the way, they'll find little ways to put themselves together and hold themselves together. But by the time they're adults, it's very exhausting. And, um, and then they start realizing, they start looking at their friends and they start, you know, seeing why are they having a good marriage? Why are they not afraid of this? Why are, mm. you know, and then it's this mm. whole, then they start realizing, holy cow, I am behind. I am underdeveloped. I'm undeveloped in many areas. And the deal is, is that the brain can resolve that and rebuild anything that we need to build at any time. It's always, it's just like it was standing ready to build in self-regulation at, at birth. If it didn't get done, all the parts are still there. They're just not hooked up and assembled yet. And so when we get in there, we can really build what we want. We want the ability to self-regulate. We build that. We teach the brain how to do that. And the brain takes over. It's like, ooh, this is fun. This is way better than what we were doing before. Mm -hmm. you know. And the next thing you know, the brain is running on that on, on us as a subconscious program, something you don't have to watch and monitor all the time. And that it just helps people feel so confident and be able to relax more because it's like their brain is actually working for them instead of them having to drag their brain around because the brain's like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know how to do that yet. Um, all these people, they feel so safe. I don't feel safe, you know, uh, and I don't know how to make myself feel safe. And we can actually help the brain learn how to generate safety. And so, so that's coming from the inside out. And so that's huge. And then the other piece that's so exciting about this is that because we're working with this part of the brain, nobody has to talk about their traumas. Right. And there's so many people that can't talk about their trauma, otherwise it's too dysregulating and the survival system will cut jump in and shut down the whole healing shut, process. shut down like, Oh, oh you're going I, in the wrong I, direction. And then you'll start to be phobic of whatever made you talk about your trauma. Mm. which is why many people don't want to go back to talk therapy because their survival system actually won't let them because it's seen as a danger. If we go there, then these things happen and then oh. we're shut down, you know? And so, but oh. to be able okay. to heal massive traumas, um, violations and horrors and tragedies without going back and talking them through is really liberating and empowering to many, many people. So, and that's great because we can still heal, heal even if we don't want to talk about things. And so that 
is I, you know i love that because like in, and I'm, go, I'm kind of going back to the episode where he, he talks like especially when you kind of talked about the cruise control because he, he asked me he said yes. when was the last time you had to think about the directions to go to work or think about the directions to go back home your brain just knows it like you don't yep. there's no mental energy being delved into it that's right so so once you're able to again put it on autopilot like hey this is a stressor this is what we do and then all of a sudden it just happens yes and and, and that like that, that's like as you're talking i'm like oh, yep like i, yeah. I just, i'm just i'm just i'm just I, I, the nerves are firing now <laughs> And that's the deal is that by the time people are adults, they have all this beautiful knowledge in their prefrontal cortex and they're in their thinking center, their skill area of their brain. And, but it's like, because it's not connecting with all of this other neuroception, they're not, and they're not able to create a subconscious program with their highest levels of skill. Mm-hmm. Right. And so now we get all this stuff to the front and mix all that together in this big bowl. I'm certain there is a big bowl up in there in the front of the brain and where you put the ingredients in there. <laughs> <laughs> and you mix it all together. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like you're doing the things that you have always wanted to be able to do. And then you're doing it on autopilot. And then that's good. Because now you go and you're like, what else do I want to learn? You know? Right. Right. Oh. <laughs> And this is perfect for people, for parents that are yelling at their kids and they're like, I know better, but I don't, I keep doing this. You know, um, this is, this is awesome for people that are having struggles in their businesses and they, they know what they want to do, but every time this happens, they freak out and they do this, right. Um, mm-hmm. it, this, it, everywhere, this, this is it's, and so it's just, it's really frustrating when you have taken all this time to gather all this knowledge and you know what to do, but you can't make yourself do it. And doing this helps the brain and the body and the mind and body come together in a unified way and move forward, as opposed to your head wants to do this, but your body wants to do that. Your nervous system wants to do this over there. And we, we're not, we can't make, we just don't have, you know, divided we fall, Mm. you know? Oh, I love it. And we, we kind of talked, we talked a little bit offline um, prior to starting as far as, especially one topic that I was very interested in, you kind of mentioned was you know this aspect of you know two to six months right let's say two to six months your typical client and but what doesn't get talked about a lot is what happens after the six months right what happens after you know they don't have to see you no more like what I think that's a that's a conversation a lot of people don't like what is that life like for a lot of uh, people just in general especially your clients like after the therapy is over right like is like do you and I always think do, do you do you do you see almost like backsliders right like they were out for a few months they were doing and then they kind of slid back in because maybe they weren't doing like what's like how how do you how do you describe what happens kind of after yeah uh, you know your therapy is over with and more importantly you know how to set people up to, for success so that they don't have to come back to see you if you know, if things go awry yeah. Well, the way I do things is that I'm teaching people skills right away. So they're, they're developing very high skills by the time they're done that they have my entire process, the way I think about things, the way I do things, and they know how to apply that to themselves. And they've had 120 to 300 hours of practice. And so, um, that's huge. And so we've cleaned up a lot. They've seen their brain uh, do new things. They, they are now re- they're hearing their subconscious mind or seeing what, you know, um, they're learning how to work with their nervous system. It's like they're, they're sitting in their brain as the leader of, of the situation. They're no longer trying to take control of their subconscious mind because mm-hmm. that's like, like people trying to control their brain. is like having an amazing, the world-class chef and you to giving them the exact ingredients, the exact temperatures mm-hmm. to cook things at and exact menus it's like you're not going to get your best things out of there you do not want to be in their kitchen you're like what are we eating you know and what can I help you with that's <laughs> that's really like what do you need for me that's really what we want to be like with our subconscious mind and our and our thinking center and, and the other parts of us is really look how can I help you and and we can even have some conversations on hey I want this <laughs> why are we not doing this <laughs> And those are conversations I encourage people to have with their brain because their brain will, your brain will always answer. It will say, well, I would love to help you with this, but this, this, and this, you know, and it might be a flashback. It might be a fear. It might be a statement. It might be another piece of the puzzle. Like, you, I, no, you need to go fix that before I can help you with this. And the brain always is doing this. And so, and some of that 
comes in the form of, of symptoms. And so when you can learn to see your systems as your, your symptoms, as your brain's communication, you have so much, we're not afraid of the symptoms anymore. And that's mm -hmm. really, there's along the way, there's a point when people really, you, when you have these disorders, you spend your time running from them. This is what we're good at. We just run from these things. But, you know, when you start you know, <laughs> trying to throw an intervention at a symptom, a symptom and then run, and then the symptom stops and it's not chasing you anymore, all of a sudden you're like, hmm. <laughs> and then you get a little bit more courageous and you try to go after something else. And then it's, you run and it's not chasing you. And then you're like, hold up here, you know? <laughs> and then you kind of stand here in your inner world and you're like, come at me. Right. Come at me. Yeah, and then and you're, the, you're the, the water is fine. The water is fine. Come on. That's, That's right. And then you start to see that every time you resolve one, you get stronger and healthier and more confident. And then you're like, oh, this is. And so you see that these, this, these are, they're not, they're not our enemy. Right. And so by the time somebody finishes this, they've done all this work. They, they're, they're learning about these things. They, they are better skilled than most therapists in this work. Yes. for themselves. Yeah. I, I do not hold back training. Um, I don't hold back anything that I know will help them. Um, I give it all. And so when they're done, what happens is, is that if they have during this, you know, they're done with their two to six months, uh, then it's like what happens before they come to me as like a hoarder's house. There's all this information that hasn't gotten through. So everything's backed up. We do the work of cleaning out the hoarding house, their inner world, where they've hoarded up all this information that has never been able to make it through, right? <laughs> now we've got a cleaned house. Okay, now there, you still have to wash the dishes every day or not. You can wash them every week. It's your business. You still have to do the laundry. <laughs> you know, there's things that it takes to live well in a house. And so, but by this time, we just hustled 300 hours of treatment into this time, you know, doing a little bit of work a week is not typically a problem for anybody. And so there's that, but then let me tell you that in houses, you know, the pipes break every once in a while. Yes. Right? yes. And, but it, you have the tools to go fix it, you know? And so when it comes up, you can be working on it. Um, sometimes in houses, you decide, mm, I got enough energy and time. I want to go build a pool in the backyard. You know, now you want to do a project, you want to soup up your house a little bit. And so, but you have the tools to go do that. And so that's what I find happens afterwards. And that's, that's what I do. I do my regular self-care and then I, you know, I'm in that building the, the building the pool in the back is like what we decide what we, that we want to do when it's time to grow. Mm. It's like, oh, I want to go learn this. Oh, I want to go learn that. Well, on a brain level, you have to build a whole nother subconscious program for that. You have to build a way of being to do that thing. So as much as you're going to go, um, let's say you're going to, you're reading, you're learning something, right? As much as you're going to learn the books, you also have to build the neural network for it. And so I teach people strategies to work with that as well. And not to be surprised when in these new areas of growth, we're outside of our comfort zone. Brains don't like that. These right. tools help with that. And so, and then wherever your brain doesn't have a solution, you're going to see symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress. And now you know what to do with them to help your brain build the neural network that you need to thrive in that area. Right. What I love, especially because the, the tools that and we you kind of mentioned, the title says it too, where we're no longer trying to run away, right, from, you know, our issues with anxiety, right? We're no longer trying to run away towards our, or run away from our issues with depression, stress. We're not running away from those things anymore because I'm building the tools within you so that you can go, you can go, not only can you find them, but you can actually go through them. And, and you mentioned how going through those levels, <laughs> going through those those, you know, those angst and everything that, that is before you is actually how you grow and not necessarily the, the opposite where you just avoid them, um, right. you know, move like avoid all types of contact right. with them. Right. And, and I, I do like that angst that we have, that is our survival system communicating. We're not okay. So I don't recommend just busting through those because you're, you're, you're survive you will deal with your survival system and it's communicating right now, like, uh, uh, no. And so we can take a moment right there and use some interventions and pull the whole brain together about it. 
Like, well, what's so dangerous about this? And we don't have to know all the answers, right? But if we ask questions, our brain, there's, there's like a Jack Russell Terrier in there. That's like, you th- it's a question is like a ball. And mm. it's like, you ask the question, it goes back and retrieves it and brings it to the front. And so, you know, well, what's so scary about this? And you're using your tapping or whatever you're using, whatever intervention, and your brain is getting to process that. And then all of a sudden, because all of a sudden there's, there's no more angst about it. And then mm. you can move forward that angst is coming from somewhere in your, in your neuroception is communicating to up in there that, Hey, this isn't okay. We're not going to be okay. We don't know what part of you that has a problem with this, but <laughs> we know that some part of you does, but let's get that information to the front and let them sort it out up there. And then we'll figure out how to move forward without that problem that, that our self was telling us about. Right. And so there's just a more um, conscious movement towards what we want and respect for our our systems so that we're not violating our systems right like if you if I were if you were to knock on my door and and I was to say hey wait a minute and you barged in I'm pissed right right (laughs) (laughs) the same way our survival systems are if you say wait a minute you know and then you give me the time to open the door and you walk in then we're good but many of us are like screw this I'm tired of being down here and then we kick our way into the door I don't care who stops me we're just fighting our whole system and then we wonder why our system's mad and then you don't want to mess with the survival system because then it's gonna override everything Mm -hmm. you have conversations with your subconscious mind and your front of your brain and your body and say how are we gonna make sure she doesn't violate us again and now they're plotting against you you don't need that this is like the most powerful system we have and to have this working against you that's how we have massive disorders. Right. Oh, I love it. And you know, before before I let you go, I want to ask you just kind of on on really basis of the you know the clientele that you typically work with. Now, is it is it typically kind of a one on one base? Is it typically in a group related? It's like like what? And for especially for you, what is the more ideal situation, right? Because I'm trying to mentally picture your prototypical you know you know grade yeah. a client right like you're the one you're, you're who comes and says like i saw the videos i'm ready right um and, and i'm trying to figure out like all right what issues were they likely dealing with in the past right we t- we talk a lot I've, I've talked a lot as far as the you know the the strong person in your family who typically gets burdened with everyone's stressors because they're the strong yes. person in the family Right. And same thing, obviously, I'm pretty sure it happens like within relationships. Like, wh- who is the typical person that comes to see you? And it is, is it usually an individual basis? Do you usually have to pull a couple? If you're doing groups, you usually have to pull the couples in to like kind of help each other. Like, how does that typically work? Yeah. You know, I, because I specialize in the specific working with the survival system, I, I, I have a whole curriculum for this. I make that available on my website. Anybody who wants to learn how to work with their brain like this, can sign up and, and benefit from them and really get phenomenal results. Um, the people who can are, are really poised to get the fastest transformation have a moderate to high level of self-reflection already built. Mm. Um, they have a moderate to high functioning support system and they have they will implement the interventions. Right. So that's that's a, like is is a joke. I, I laugh a little bit because that is such an important aspect yeah. in like in everything, right? Like you know, you're expert. We're experts all day, but if what I'm telling you to do, you don't actually do it, like, do it, like then then like what good am I? So like I, yeah. I, I love that you I have to say that because you, you yes. do have to say it. You do have yes. to say like I actually need a person who's going to, you know, take this action that yeah. I've been telling them to take. That's right. And and it's and there's and if if somebody were to do my program and do a little bit of the exercises here and there, they're still going to get results. Uh anytime we help the brain, we get results. It's just that you're going to, it takes about to resolve a disorder, what from my process and from what I've, my experiences, it takes about 120 to 300 hours of specific and targeted brain work. And you can do that brain work in two to six months, or you can do that in two to six years. It's, or you can do it longer. I I mean, there's not, I'm not here to judge how somebody lives their life journey and walks their path. Right. But I do know that if we want to hit this and quit this, we can. 
And there are many people who want to hit it and quit it. And that's what I'm here for. But so what, um, what I found is that I, I do um, an eight week intensive with um, two, two hour small group sessions. Okay. Per week. And so each week there, there's four hours with me. Um, I do a one-on-one -on -one in the beginning because I want to match them with interventions. I want to try the interventions with them. I want to help them with the first exercise and we're going to integrate, we integrate the interventions with the, with the exercises. And so it's like basically brain pushups. Um, yeah. But, and so, yeah, we, we're doing the exercises together and we're watching how the interventions work for them. And so uh, when we find ones that one that really works great, we're off and running. I might try a couple more because it's nice to have some backups. Um, and, and then we're, we're working. And then I want to make sure that they feel confident that they can continue the work before their first group session, because I have people doing the work outside of the sessions as well. And then they're off and they jump into the the small group sessions and those small group sessions are really wonderful. I used to be nervous because I've always done this one-on-one, -on -one. but because it's not talk therapy and I'm not running a support group, we're actually, these are work sessions. And right. so it's not like you're saying, Hey, tell me your darkest secret in front of these other. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> and so it's like, and while you're using the interventions, because I give everyone individualized attention and we're strategizing about the symptom that they want, that they want, and their brain will tell you which symptoms it wants to work through first. And so I'm helping them pick up that information and then work with it. And so uh, once we've got that strategized and they feel like they can use the interventions with it, they're going to jump off and use the interventions and I'm going to move to the next person. The next, and then they're going to come on when they're finished. And then I'm going to jump back over here and, mm -hmm. and I keep them working and they have my coaching um, kind of to, to support them over them, you know, looking ahead of the thing for them and just really my expertise to make sure that they're to have that extra layer of confidence that they're doing it well and doing it right. And because I've seen lots of the insides of many people's brains <laughs> from right. the outside. I, uh, I can catch things that, that most people just, um, it takes them a while to get that level of um, self-awareness and connection yes. to be able to catch. You know, I mean, this has been such an am amazing conversation. Like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to go back and listen to Dr. Dio's episode because, like, like as, as you're, as you're talking, I'm like, oh yeah, that makes. And and obviously, we were talking uh, in, in from a medical standpoint, but just kind of to hear you introduce it in a way that, like, oh, it would make sense. It would also help the mental health related standpoint. Like, it just, like, duh, like, like, it's like so. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Um, you know, like I said, definitely, definitely uh, lunch learning community. I mean, this has been such a, just an amazing conversation. Before I let you go, um, I, I, I want to give you an opportunity, you know, obviously kind of just, you know, let the lunch learning community kind of know if, if you're working on anything new, where can they find you? Of course, everything's going to be show notes, but I, I always like to let my guests like kind of, you know, tell us, right? Like, you know, what can we expect if there's anything to expect uh, from them or just kind of how to follow up? Uh, you know, uh, with them as well. Like, so like, this is, this is kind of your time. Like I said, thank you so much for, you know, really blessing us. Uh, it was again, such an amazing, important conversation um, for a lot of people, because especially obviously because mental health is, you know, being talked about, being talked about and, and understanding that it's not a one size fit all for people who may have mm -hmm. tried what they figured was all of mental health therapy, not realizing that like, you know, there's a lot of interventions that you, you you may not even realize are out there that could benefit you. So um, uh, t t like I said, floor is yours. Okay. You know, where can they find you? Who like, give, give them the YouTube channel, all, all the details. Like I'm, All the details. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, the best place to find me is on my website and that's at rachelmcleod.com. And I'm going to spell that because my name is spelled like Rochelle. So it's R-A-C-H-E-L-L-E-M-C-C-L-O-U-D.com. And that is, everything's on there. I, I have a Facebook group where I give, I give trainings uh, on interventions. Um, I, so I, I like to play with, I like to hand people interventions. So that's really where I do that. Um, I have a YouTube channel. You can find that on my website. I have a hundred videos up there. I'm talking about everything from why you're not getting results with your therapist to why your parents were emotionally unavailable, why you may be too. Um, I am talking mm -hmm. about how to get rid of panic attacks. I am, you know, uh, everything I run my mouth. <laughs> I have 
have a lot to talk about. <laughs> and so, um, but, but really my website is the hub for that. My, um, my, the, my program is uh, just on there. You can look at the details of that, the intensive and the self-study course are there. And yeah. Oh, just before I, before I let you, because I always, always get this question, um, location wise are, is, is your, the treat, the therapy that everything that you do, is it, is it typically face to face or is, is there virtual options? I, I do all my coaching online. I am zooming it all the time online, um, even if they're local. And so the small groups are there in therapy. I'm I, I love it. That. Even if they're local. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. And so that's, that's how we're doing it, especially right now. But even before COVID happened, this is, I, it's, it's perfect because if you need to cry, you can touch turn your mic off, your mic off and shut your sound, your video off and have you a good cry. And I welcome that because it's a, it's a great crying is a wonderful healing intervention. It's the one that comes with our operating system. We get too stressed out. You cry. It helps your brain move the emotion through to the front and you get better. Um, and so if it's time for someone to cry, they have that option. Right. And so, and there's just a lot more freedom working from your own home then. And plus that's where your brain needs the most support in your life. Not in my office. Mm. You know? Again, uh, Rachel, I want to, again, thank you. One, more importantly, for stepping out, because obviously it's much easier in 2022 uh, than it was in 2016, right, to be stepping out and doing what you're doing, right? So I want to commend you because, again, <laughs> I know a lot of, I have at least the medical side, there's a lot of my colleagues who, you know, they, they have ideas, they have thoughts, they have wishes, but they don't necessarily act on them for fear of, quote unquote, being outside the box, right? So the fact that you said, you know what, I don't care, right? Or maybe you didn't say no care, they kind of forced it to, right? Like, you're like, I'm gonna do what I do, because I know this takes care of the goal, right? Which is really okay. take care of my client, right? Take care of my, right. I, I, I always say patient, but like, you know, um, you know, it's to take yeah. care of the person who I'm supposed to be taking care of. And the fact that you stepped out, right? And said, I'm going to do it. Um, you know, I commend you, uh, again, you. you definitely from lunch, learn community standpoint, you will definitely get all our support. Um, you know, we definitely send in your way as well too. We wish you just, you know, all the luck and, uh, and I hope, you know, we get to a point where it's like, oh, you don't do, oh, you don't do that. Like why? Like, like that's, yes. that's what I'm hoping. Right. I hope yes, you, me too. Maybe, maybe takes in the next year. Maybe, maybe yeah. you know, oh, any books, any books, any books or uh, any plans or, you know, I always ask about books. Yes. I, I, was like, right, I, I absolutely like. have plans for a book <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. coming. Okay. All absolutely. right. Absolutely. I think this is going to be really revolutionary to our field because it's the, the, the talk therapists that are out there are really wonderful for support, but they're not wonderful for getting rid of symptoms. And mm. so it's like, if we can do that symptom resolution work that's, and they can that's do a, support, that's a tough that, one. That's a, <laughs> you know, it's like, now we just diversify and enriched our whole field. And when you count, you know, I think that, you know, there's mixed feelings about mental health therapy because we haven't been getting results, the results people want for the majority of, you know, for lots of people, not the majority, mm -hmm. but the majority of people with complex childhood trauma, right. Which is a lot of people. And so, um, I just think that this is going to, there's going to be so much more collaboration and specific specializing and really so many more great results. Well, I, I, can't, I can't wait. And it definitely sounds like you're going to be a front, a front runner, a front runner uh, and a leader uh, in the space that clearly needs, um, you know, uh, more publicity. I don't want to say publicity, but just more of, of an onus to say like, hey, this, this is, an, this is a, a, an arm. This is a weapon that we have, right, in this battle. Right, of mental health right like and we should we shouldn't go into a battle and not use all of the weapons available it just it doesn't make any sense you wouldn't do it nowhere else right so why no. uh, unless you're in medicine like because we do that all the time right <laughs> we we're crazy medicine just a whole nother discussion hold on <laughs> So oh, again, you know, before before yes, I yes, uh, talk jump off, I, I forgot to mention my email list. I oh yes, yes, absolutely encourage people to do that. I I talk a lot about this. People tell me that you know just from my emails alone, they are able to get rid of symptoms and really start getting stronger and healthier. And so I'm really 
I, and my my whole goal is surrounded by teaching people how to do this for themselves. And so I really am dropping those nuggets everywhere I possibly can. And my email list is packed full of that. So and how do we get your email list as we get from... on my good on my website? website? Okay. <laughs> You'll see it right there. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. So again, remember our listening much. community, all all the links, everything she mentioned will definitely be in the show notes. Make sure you subscribe to her email list. Make sure you subscribe to her YouTube channel. Um, let's hassle her to get this book out. Um, you know, sooner rather than later, right? Like let's let's do these things. Let's support, let's support the the creators and you know the, the entrepreneurs who are are going above and beyond right uh, for everyone else right like let's let's I, I'm, I'm big i'm just big on that um let, let's support and let, let let's let's make sure uh you know she you know she she continues to be blessed uh on a, a, such an amazing path that she continues to walk on thank you thank you again